What's up, people? This is a flash video, very quick, out of the blue video uh, about quadrants and S catches. Damian Henderson watched my video from way back 2013 when I had a dislocated right shoulder, and I did everything with my left hand. Well, now that I have a fully functional right hand, I am going to demonstrate the same techniques, but with the dominant hand. So uh, let's just go ahead and get started. Uh, now, quadrants, when I call a quadrant, is basically you have points on your shoulders and by your hips. And you can do techniques that weave around them and it looks more interesting. For instance, if I do uh, figure eight to the right, that looks interesting. But once we start adding quadrants, we can start pulling it around to different areas of the body while doing the figure eight still, but we're just kind of moving the motion. So how do you get into quadrants is very simple. You need to break it down into little pieces. Everything is a piece. So uh, for instance, to do a figure eight, you might want to think about starting to do a figure eight by creating a circle, uh, on the inside of your body like so and then before you make the transition also see if you can make a circle on the outside now that seems very simple but once you start going around quadrants you have to make sure that those circles exist before you can move through them and then all you've got to do is find the connection point which is usually 12 o'clock as it slashes down to six o'clock to the other side and you have your figure eight now this theory also applies to quadrants that go around the body but it's going to be a little bit different because because it's it's moving at it let me move this down here because it's moving at different angles all of a sudden oh, let me adjust this all of a sudden uh getting it to spin it through your body is a little bit more challenging so this may not be a problem so right now i have my right hand and it's spinning clockwise around my body. But this, on the other hand, this may be more of an issue because how many times, let, let me ask you the truth, how many times do you ever put something behind your back and spin it behind you? Probably never, unless you've already worked on this. So now what we're gonna do is we need to be able to work on spinning both directions, in front and in back. So you can even just practice this motion like this to just kind of get a feel for it. And in the same way, you're gonna get your hand behind your back and you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna see if you can get it forwards and then you're gonna see if you can get it backwards. Now the good news is, is if you can do this, you can do quadrants easily. It's actually easier to do this than it is to hold a circle and hold a circle. But uh, knowing how to hold the circle, I think is vital and important anyways to help you unlock future moves. So I say go ahead and do it. So what I want you to do is with your right hand, go counterclockwise, go clockwise, and then go behind you. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> this is a uh, counterclockwise, and then we go clockwise. I mean, it depends. The camera's going to see it opposite. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to work on connecting the points. And again, it's always the same. Once it hits 12 o'clock, it's shooting to the back. Now, I didn't actually give you a technique as to how to spin behind your back, but essentially what happens, if you just start here first, if you start with your hand behind your back and you try to make a circle, you're gonna find there's probably only about one way that it works, and that's that your wrist twist tilts a little bit backwards. That creates enough space for this circle to create itself. Now, it may start moving sideways if you're not giving it enough, if you're not giving it enough torque, and in that way, just kind of lift your hand up and down while your wrist is bent backwards. So get it started, lift your hand up and down, and see if you can get it to spin. So here, twist the wrist backwards and pull up and down if you need to. Eventually you won't need to do it so much, but that's just to kind of feel it. So as you're twisting your ribs up and down, if you start to feel it, just kind of hold it there. Uh, try to hold it more steady and bring it down from your elbows down to your fingers. Your control point uh, to have the most control is gonna be by the fingertips. So if you can use your fingertips to create control, then you can do it, you can do it and make it look effort. Whereas in the beginning, you may need to use your elbows. So again, once you hit six o'clock, we transition over to 12 o'clock on the other end. So, and it's the exact opposite. Once this is down at six o'clock, we pull it forward to 12. But again, I don't think the transition's nearly as hard as just the ability to do this. So until you can do this motion here, or until you get the muscle memory to feel it out, don't try to do the transition because uh, you're gonna find that it's gonna be a lot more difficult because your hand doesn't exactly know how to tilt itself back. You really gotta learn how to do this weird, awkward tilt back, okay? So once you can do that, you should be able to go both sides, whoosh, whoosh, and you have one part of your quadrant. Now there's lots of different kinds of quadrants, obviously, but I just say you should just work on that to start and then eventually you're gonna go to the other side. Uh, again, we're gonna, now this is gonna be a little bit more challenging because you're across your body. So what this means is when we're on the same side of the body, this is probably what we're most used to because right hand's on the right side, left hand's on the left side. As your arm begins to stretch out, you realize you have to give it a little bit more of a, of a stretching motion to keep the plane straight. Uh, and what I mean by that is if I'm moving this way, you're gonna see that this is even tighter to the, 
the line of my arm like this. It's actually kind of moving. Because my arm's already on here, it's actually moving, almost touching my arm. It's very close. And that's how you keep a straight plane like this, is you have to make it a little bit tighter. Okay? So the next thing you're gonna do is you're just gonna kind of stand here. You can use a mirror or whatnot, but just see if you can make a circle this way, and then stop, and then see if you can make a circle the other way. Now, this is an advanced, this is more of an advanced quadrant to the back, so if you wanna try it, that's great. If you don't, again, the way to do it is not to try to do the figure eight to start with, but to just see if you can just hold it behind you. Now, the way that this one works is it's almost like a super elongated upward motion, and the way to get it to really connect behind you is to shoot it down, okay? So it's this downward motion that causes it to kind of straighten itself out. Uh, if you slash too much diagonally, it's gonna hit you in your leg. So I don't, I'm trying to see if I can find the right angle. So again, if you're doing this, if you're across your body and you slash it down diagonally, it could either hit your butt or it's gonna come down at an angle. So you wanna make sure it's more of a, you're trying to keep this as tight as you can, just kind of like as your wrist, how this is very tight across your, across your body like this, how it's across the line of your arm. It's gonna be the same thing, but it's very downward as it crosses over. You can even twist your body a little bit to, to, make, it, to make it work. So I'm gonna stand sideways here, here, and then as soon as it reaches 12 o'clock, we're gonna twist it down like this. Again, it's an upwards and downwards pull that allows you to create the circle. You don't have a lot of space and it's a very awkward motion. So before you, you can even begin to do this motion here, what I'd like you to do is just see if you can just kind of feel it by pulling your hand behind your back and just creating circles. Once you can do it that way, go ahead and reverse it. You, get, you see how this is going, right? Um, another thing you can do, uh, once you get the feel of this, uh, you can do this with both, both of them. For instance, if I'm on my right side too, this is another technique you can try. You can do your figure eight and slowly pull it into your hip. And do you see how my wrist had to adjust the moment it made connection? That's what you want to do. Again, though, that's going to be more of a that's going to be something more of once your hand understands where it needs to go. So start off long, slowly pull it towards your hip, and then make the adjustment to the point where you're actually making a connection, and then slowly pull it back out. And then go the other way. It's going to be the same with this too. You can start elongate it out, slowly pull it towards your hip. The nice thing about pulling this towards the hip. Now, do you notice as I connect closer to the hip, I can actually use my hip. I can use my hip to kind of guide it back and forth just a little bit. So you can also do that. You can almost lock it in with your hip, feel the momentum, and just have your hip kind of guide it through. Uh, that's a slightly different motion than this one. This is more of a connected motion, but it's the same. It's kind of the same concept. This works great when you have two nunchucks. Let me go grab another one. I always say using two hips doesn't look as using your hips doesn't look as sturdy. Like if I'm like ah, whoosh. You know, kind of looks kind of weird as opposed to like this. But if you have two nunchucks, you can cross it over like this, and that definitely looks cool. Boom. I meant to do that. Anyways, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's funny. So again, you can start out long, pull it in, use your hand, just use your wrist, or try to use your hips. Those are gonna be two different ways. Sometimes the hip works as we pull it through different quadrants of our body, which we will get to later. Okay, let's continue forward. So you're gonna have the shoulders too. Shoulders will be the exact same thing, except for you gotta make sure you don't hit your head. So this is weird because again, you're doing a figure eight, but you're, you're, you're at a very strange place right here. I mean, the, I'm gonna pull this up a little bit. The chuck is kind of by your head. So here's one, and it kind of looks like a, like a dino hand by, by your wrist, you know, when new people start and they have the dino hand, except for it's a dino hand by your head, and it serves a purpose. Now, the weird thing about this motion is there's actually kind of like this curvy thing that happens, and what I like to say is the wrist leads. Watch my wrist. Do you see how it kind of leads? My elbow's actually, technically, my elbow can lead with the wrist, but this is the kind of motion that you're making. You're kind of creating, uh, if I was to draw an imaginary circle, it's like half circle here, pulling it back, half circle behind my head, pulling it forward. See, there's a circle, 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 circle. And it's kind of the same thing here. You can see my wrist is kind of pulling a circle. So if you want to think of like here, and then it goes behind the back of the head to 12 o'clock, front, do you see that? And that's kind of how we create this motion. It's very, you can even elongate it just to really feel it through. This is gonna be the quadrant of the shoulder. It's not gonna be the quadrant of the head. This is, a, this is kind of a different feel, but we're gonna do the shoulder and back and forth. 
Uh, and the opposite direction is even weirder because it doesn't use your wrist, but it uses your thumb and it's kind of digging through, but it's the same exact thing. It's because we need to go the opposite direction, whereas we're going from 12 to six and then going up to 12 and six on the other side. You know how we always start at the top, go to the bottom and then do a half circle the other way. Uh, if we go the reverse direction, it's going to be the exact opposite, where we're pulling up from 6 to 12. And this means that our pinky side leads. So now it's going to look, if I was to elongate my hand, it's 6 o'clock moving up to 12 o'clock, down to 6 o'clock moving up to 12 o'clock, down to 6, and it continues on. So this way has more of, a, of like the pinkies leading. You may not even want to use your chucks to start with this. You may even just try to see if you can just move it without anything spinning before you can do it with something spinning over it. Now, the shoulders are definitely more, I would say it's more challenging and more difficult. So just do what you can. Really work these though, because these, uh, not only are they good, but they, it, there's a lot of motions that you can do around the waist area uh, where the shoulder's a little bit more limited. So this is more like a specialist kind of motion. It is good, and there's a lot of cool things you can do up here too, but your, your hips are actually gonna be a little bit more important. And lastly, we have this motion, and then the exact opposite, which I find to be the hardest motion because I always hit the back of my shoulder. But it's gonna be the same concept as before. What you're gonna try to do is just create a circle in front of you and create a circle behind you before you connect them. So work hard on the front, work on them in the back. Might take you a week, might take you an hour, might take you a month. Just keep working until you have a really nice plane, really nice circles before you go to the other side. And then once you have it down, you connect it. Now, the reason why I say the reverse is difficult is just because we're trying to get from six o'clock to 12 o'clock behind us across our body, which is a really awkward motion because we're at six o'clock, pulling it up to 12, six o'clock, pulling it up to 12. I find it's more work than it's worth, and I don't ever use this very often, so I don't usually do it too much. I probably should someday. I'm just trying to think of when that would even come into play. I feel like with chucks, you can get really creative and you can do a lot of poi-like moves. Um, but there also gets a point where the chucks doesn't really have that chuck feel. It just kind of starts looking like a, like a really, like, like when you get too wound up and twisty and it, it eventually starts looking like, like, I don't know, like there's some techniques that I just think that eventually starts looking like you're a Gumby or, or something. So I personally like to go to the ones where I can keep a nice steady flow, still do tricks that can like make people do a, a double take, but at the same time, it just, the aesthetics of it look nice. So that is your S catch, or that's your, those are your quadrants, and there's a lot more to it. It gets deeper, because we haven't even gone to the left side, and we haven't gone to transitions, but you can't transition or do any of that until you have the basic quadrants down, and then you just kind of play connect the dots. The other thing I wanted to talk about was the S catch. Now the S catch is basically two front grips, like so. Your thumbs are at the bottom of the tabs and the pointer fingers at the top. The prerequisite, you should know how to moon wave, which watch my old video if you don't. I have plenty of videos on the moon wave and you should be able to sun wave. If you can't do either of these, you're gonna have a difficult time doing the S catch because the S catch is a mix between a moon wave and a sun wave. You have one thumb and one pointer, okay? So the easiest way that I can say that you should do it is get the top first because if you get the top first, you can get the bottom. So on your left hand, Basically, you're gonna open up all your fingers but your pointer finger, which is gonna sit on the tab and you're just gonna basically, with your thumb, you're gonna pop it over the top of your pointer finger. So here, open up your fingers, use your thumb, twist, pop it over, make sure your pointer finger's there. It should create a loop. You should be stuck in a loop right here, right? So again, let's do it again, pop. Now that's, that's the hardest part. The second part is all your fingers open up, you can kinda of connect your fingers and your thumb, it gets ready, it becomes a mouth raw. And then this becomes a moon wave but you kind of need a little bit of force for it, but uh, this motion, you're gonna be twisting just a little bit. So we don't have that right now because we're breaking it into parts. But basically you're gonna open your thumb and just kind of give it a little bit of a swing until it lands over in the palm of your hand. And once it does, you catch it. And there is your S catch. So in one, two, it's two motions. Again, uh, open up all your fingers, use your thumb, kind of pop it over the top. And then here it goes underneath the thumb. So left is pointer finger, right is thumb. Boom, take it one step at a time. First, get the pointer finger on the top. Second, get the thumb on the bottom, grab. Boom, there's your S catch. Uh, easy way to get out of this is the one that's on top. You see how it's on top of my fingers? You can just kind of pop it up and it and it flows, it flows in a whole circle until it reaches the bottom where your hands can 
grab over, over it and it becomes a moon wave. From here we can just pop it down and unlock it. So here, here, here. Now, uh, the, uh, the thing about the S-Catch, getting it all at once is, is almost like I kind of give it a little bit of torque. So I'm getting ready to do the S-Catch because I, you, don't, you don't see me do this. I don't go one, two, it, it's a one motion. And the way that works is you're going to do both at the same time now. So uh, this is going to go over the top while this is going to go through the bottom. But we need a torque. We need to find a way to, to give it a little bit of, of momentum. So I'm going to kind of, I'm holding it horizontally, but I'm going to tilt my right hand upwards just a little bit just so I can push it down. So basically I'm pulling it like this from here to here. And it's the moment I reach this point, I open up my pointer finger and I open up my thumb. So my pointer finger on my left opens, my thumb opens on my right, and they're both going to float. Psh, psh. And it's going to be those individual moves that we worked on. So I hope this helps. Uh, this is kind of a longer flash video. This goes back over an old school concept. Please send me a message, comment, like, subscribe. Let me know if you can get it. And yeah, if you have any more questions, definitely holler because I, I like answering questions and knowing that the material I create is going out to help someone. So send me a message. Hope you all are doing awesome.